What's going on guys, welcome back to another video. Here we go again. Passage number five, blueprint exam, CP section. A lot of you guys find the CP section difficult and I don't see why because CP, BB, all the MCAT is easy. Except for cars. Cars, cars is a little hard, but anything else, the MCAT is easy guys. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Eric and I'm on a mission to make sure that this MCAT is as easy as possible for you guys because pre-meds, Y'all got a lot to go through. There's a lot going on as a pre-med, okay? So you don't deserve to have this MCAT as this huge obstacle going into med school. All right, so I'm going to be breaking this down. I'm going to show you guys exactly how to pick the best answer, where to highlight, how to make this passage make sense. And um, if there's any MCAT traps, I'm going to show you guys how to recognize them, all right? So as always, guys, do this on your own first and then hear me break it down, okay? So this is the passage. So... This is it, pause it whenever you need to. Okay, read this on your own first. Here are the questions, answer these questions on your own first, write them down, see what you got right, see what you got wrong. Here we go, I'm gonna break this down right now. Let me sip on my water. Okay. <clears throat> Potentiometric titration, I never heard that one before is a useful means of characterizing an acid. What does it do? Characterizes an acid. Okay, I'm highlighting things that stick out to me. No indicator is used. Instead, the cell potential is measured across the analyte solution. All right, cell potential is measured across the analyte. When cell potential is plotted against titrant volume added, the equivalence point is the cell potential at the inflection point, the midpoint of the steep segment of the titration curve. Okay, very important there. All right, so the way they word is a little weird, but basically the equivalence point, all right, that's the midpoint of the steep segment of the titration curve. We know that in our content review, but that equivalent point is the cell potential. All right, if you want to know cell potential, titrate something, Look at the equivalence point. That's your cell potential, all right? For polyprotic acids, an acidic hydrogen will produce an inflection point only if it is not very weakly acidic and if its ionization constant differs from that of the other acidic hydrogen of the acid by at least a factor of 10 to the 4, okay? So an acidic hydrogen, it only produces that inflection point if it's not weak, all right, if it's not weak, if it is not weak, I'm highlighting things to kind of give me a reminder in my head of what's going on in this passage, okay, because I already sense that this passage is it's going to be a little difficult one, okay, so I'm reading it slow, highlighting what I need to, and if its ionization constant differs from that of any other acidic hydrogen of the acid by at least a factor of 10 to the fourth, okay, that makes sense, captopril, captopril, molecular weight 217 shown in figure one is a competitive inhibitor of angiotensin converting enzyme all right thanks for randomly telling me this okay they randomly threw this at me so obviously there's going to be a question involving this whenever they throw random things at you like this the question is most likely to ask about it okay so that's captotrol a competitive inhibitor of ace students studying captopril were provided the following in vivo IC50 values. What the heck is IC50? The minimum plasma concentration needed to inhibit 50% of target enzyme activity in vivo. For captopril inhibition of ACE under different pH conditions, okay? So, this is a table here. They're basically putting this uh, inhibitor in different pHs and they're looking to see, hey, is that inhibitor good under low pH? Is that inhibitor good under high pH? What's the best pH for that inhibitor? All right, and we don't look at this table yet. All right, only when the question asks for it, you look at the table and figures. You don't want to waste your time, you know, analyzing these figures when the question doesn't even ask for it. Okay, so we skip that table. Here we go. Students then performed a pot potentiometric titration of captopril in order to determine the captopril content contained in a tabulate formation. So they did this titration to find out the content, how much captopril do we have, okay? Notice that I'm reading it a little slower, okay? I'm enunciating every word here, okay? 
because I know that sometimes the MCAT will throw hard, sometimes the MCAT will throw easy passages at you. This one in particular for me, okay, maybe for you it's easy, but for me, it's on a little, a little more trickier level. So I'm making sure that I go ahead and look at all these details and read slow and enunciate so I know exactly what's going on here and I know why they're doing this experiment, okay? Two tablets were grounded and homogenized, producing 104.4 grams of fine powder. The powder was then dissolved in 100 milliliters of water and titrated with a solution of 2 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity NaOH. Okay, I'm highlighting this because usually I see molarity as like a 1 molarity when they titrate it. All right, or they'll be like 2 millimolarity, but instead they gave me some interesting numbers here. Okay, I don't know why they did that. The potentiometric titration curve obtained along with the plot of the rate of change of potential during the titration is shown in figure two. All right. So don't look at the figure. Don't analyze it yet. Only when the question asks for it. But you can look at the caption here. Potentiometric titration curve of captoprol with NaOH solution and B, a rate of change of cell potential. Okay. So. This passage, I'm going to say that it is a little on the difficult side, okay? Not too crazy, but it's definitely on the difficult side. So, let me see. Basically, what they did here, all right, they told me this new method of titrating, and they told me that it's a way to measure cell potential, all right? When you look at the equivalence point, that's equal to the cell potential. They gave me capital pearl. They told me it's a competitive inhibitor. They gave me information on capital pearl under different pH ranges. And they told me how they found the capital content contained in a tablet formation. Okay, and they did that with the NaOH here. All right. How many moles of capital pro were present in the original analyt solution tested? How many moles were present in the original analyte solution tested? Okay. Good question. Very good question. All right, I see a titration curve. All right, whenever you see moles, whenever they ask you about moles and you're given a titration curve, okay, use that titration curve. All right, that titration curve has important information regarding moles. And what is that important information? Well, if you remember in your content review, okay, the equivalence point of a titration curve, all right, in this case, it's the cell potential, whatever. But the titration, the equivalence point of a titration curve, which is like right here, okay, that is always equal to one mole of acid and one mole of base, okay? Right there, that information is going to help you a ton, help you a ton, all right? So what is this telling us here? This is telling us that we added 7.5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. All right. They are asking us, they want to know how much captopril, all right, how much captopril do we have? That's what they're asking us. How much captopril do we have? All right. And we know that we have 7.5 milliliters of NaOH added. And in that 7.5 NaOH added, if we find out how many moles is in that, that will be equal to the moles of captopril because at the equivalence point, the moles of captopril is equal to the moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so that is what we are trying to find. And in order to make it make more sense for you guys, I'm going to go to the whiteboard here. All right, whiteboard. Where is it? This one here. I'm going to go to the whiteboard. All right, here's the whiteboard. So what are they doing? What are they asking here? How many moles? They're asking for the moles. How many moles, okay? What do they give us? Well, we know we have 7.5 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, and we know that we have how much molarity of sodium hydroxide? I'm gonna rewrite this. We have, oh, here. 2 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity of sodium hydroxide. So 2 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity of sodium, oh, I read that wrong, of, of sodium hydroxide. All right. I'm going to repeat it one more time, okay? They are asking us for the moles of captopril, 
okay? I can find the moles of capital pril by finding the moles of NaOH at the equivalence point because the moles of NaOH at the equivalence point is equal to the moles of capital pril, all right? And how much volume? 7.5 milliliters, all right? So 7.5 milliliters of 2 times 10 to the negative 2 molarity sodium hydroxide. How many moles is in this? How many moles? All right, let's, let's do the math here. Okay, let's do the math. So 7.5 milliliters. Actually, I'll write it a different way for you guys. All right, 2 times 10. So the negative 2 molarity is equal to moles per liter. All right. What are we given? Liter. That's why I always like to write out the units, all right? I don't write molarity only. I write moles per liter so I can help me cancel things out, all right? Times 7.5 times 10. We have milli here, so times 10 to the negative 3 liters. That's going to give me moles. Okay, so let's multiply this here. What did they give us here? Okay. So 2 times 7.5, 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times 0.5 is uh, 15, also they give us here. Okay, so I'll write it out for you guys. So 7.5 times 2, if you want to do it this way, 0, 1, 7 times 2 is 14, plus the 1 is 15. Okay, so we have 15 times 10. To all right, whenever you're multiplying exponents, you just combine them. So times ten and negative fifth. Do they give us that answer? Okay, they give us to the fourth. So we move this. It's one point five times ten lars. That is my mnemonic. Okay, if I move to the left, I'm going to add. So I add one. Negative five plus one is negative four. The answer is one point five times ten to the negative four. That is the amount of moles of sodium hydroxide that we have in 7.5 milliliters but since we're at the equivalence point that is also the moles of capital pril okay so the answer is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 4. wow that was a mouthful i would say that was a a very mcat representative question okay that's a really good mcat representative question that's how they want you to think very good question there all right if the students perform an enzyme inhibition assay using capital pril which of the following changes in the kinetic parameters of ACE should be expected? All right, simple, quick, guys, competitive inhibitor. No excuse why you should not know, you know, your competitive inhibition, uh, non-competitive, all that stuff. Competitive inhibitors, they're going to increase the KM, and the VMAX is going to be unchanged. So it's this one right here. 24 <clears throat> is D. Which of the following protonation states of the captopril thiol and carboxyl groups is required to maximize captopril's inhibition of ACE. All right. Well, they gave us some pH ranges here, and they said, ah, oh, this pH is good, this pH is bad. All right, let's see which pH range is the best. All right, because we want to maximize the inhibition. So which one do we have the best IC50? Now, does the best, does high or low IC50 values which are, which are good? What do we want? Do we want high IC50 or do we want low IC50? All right, let's, let's look at what IC50 is. Okay, it's okay if you forget, but just go, ahead, go at it quick, okay? The minimum plasma concentration needed to inhibit 50% of target enzyme activity in vivo. Okay, so this means that we want the pH to be low. We want a low pH here, okay? Because if we have... I'm not low pH, a low IC, my bad. We want a low IC because a low IC means, hey, we only need a little bit to do a lot of damage, all right? So we want to maximize it. So that's what that means. So 3.8 to 9.5, the pH is, all right? And they want to know whether it's deprotonated or protonated. Okay, very good high yield stuff here, guys. You have to know this. This is very high yield, all right? And a lot of students get this confused, all right? 3.8 to 9.5. What's going to be protonated? What's going to be deprotonated at a pH of 3.8 to 9.5? Now let's start looking at the carboxyl group here. All right. The pKa is 3.7. The pKa is the pH where we have deprotonation of the hydrogen. Okay. So if we're at a 3.8 to 9.5 pH, 
is that hydrogen going to be deprotonated? Yes or no? The answer is yes, that will be deprotonated. The high pH means basic, means we want that hydrogen off. So this hydrogen is going to be deprotonated. All right, and this hydrogen, all right, since we're under the pKa, we're at 9.5, which is under 9.8, this one's going to be protonated. So we're going to have a deprotonated carboxyl group and a protonated um, thiol group here. So deprotonated carboxyl, deprotonated carboxyl, where is it? Deprotonated carboxyl and protonated thiol. Correct. The answer for 25 is B. According to the data in table one, what mass of captopril must be dissolved in three liters of plasma at pH 7.4 to inhibit 50% of ACE enzyme activity in vivo? Another gen chem question asking about masses, moles, all this stuff, okay? So we're looking for the mass. We're looking for the mass. All right, three liters they gave us. They gave us three liters. They gave us the volume of plasma at pH 7.4 to inhibit 50% of, okay. And they gave us the concentration here. We're going to use 0 0.012 because pH 7.4 is between here. All right. The only one that has pH 7.4 is this one. This one doesn't have 7.4. This one doesn't, this one does, this one does not have 7.4. So we're going to use these concentrations here. All right. 0 0.012 micromolarity, 0 0.012 micromolarity. All right, so we have our information. What do we do? How do we find the mass? Well, if you guys are stuck, I highly recommend you guys do this. Write out the units, write out the units, okay? 0 0.012 micro, so times 10 to the negative six, molarity, I write out these units, which are moles, per liter. All right, now that I wrote the units, I can kind of see what's going on here. I have liter, three liters. Cool, three liters. We multiply this, what do we get? All right, I don't like how this looks. We're gonna go one, two. All right, Lars, we went to the right twice. So we subtract by two here. So this is gonna be, instead of this, it's gonna be 1.2 times 10 to the negative eight times three. It's going to be 3, 12 times 3 is 36, so 3.6 times 10 to the negative 8. We crossed out liters, we get moles. So we have 3.6 times 10 to the negative 8 moles. Now we have moles. We're looking for mass. We're looking for mass. Is there an equation to go from mole to mass? Yes, there is. Okay, moles is equal to mass over molar mass. And they gave us the molar mass, I'm pretty sure. They have to. Okay, what is it? <clears throat> 215. I'm around that 200. All right. This, I don't like it. I'd rather have 2 times 10 to this 2. This is equal 3.6 times 2 is 7 point, 7 point. Okay, they're all 7.9. So there has to be 7.9 times 10. When you're multiplying these, you just combine 7.9 times 10 to the negative 6. Answer is this which is 10 to negative six is micro. So what says micro, pico, nano, micro, enter C. But bam, let's see if we got all these right. Let's see, let's see, let's see. 23, we put B. That is the one that we put. Just to double make sure, I'm gonna show you guys. Oh, but bam, B, let's keep going. Next, D, let's go. You know your competitive inhibitors. B, protonated thiol and deprotonated carboxyl. Bam, there's explanation if you guys would like. Bam, 26. Bam, that's how we do it, guys. We're confident, we're effective, we follow a procedure, and we do what's proven to score well on the MCAT. I teach MCAT proven techniques to score well on the MCAT. And if you're interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, learning MCAT proven techniques, okay, go ahead to the comment section of this video, click on the link and fill out the application form to schedule an interview. Okay, we'll schedule an interview. I'll see if you're a good fit. And if it seems like we're a good fit to work with each other, then 
I will ask you to join MCAT University. And in MCAT University, I have tutors in there. I have uh, old MCAT exams. I have other students working hard as well. It's the whole entire package you need to hear a target score. I will hold your hand and make sure you hit that target score. I've done it plenty of times with pre and I'll make sure that I do it with you. So go ahead, click on that link, fill it out, and I'll see you guys in the next video.